Hello and welcome along to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast here, hosted uh, by us three lovely media technicians that you know and love and adore. Uh, myself, James. Me, Will. And me, Steve. So, uh, coming up in this episode, uh, Steve has finally caught up with all his films. We'll hear more about that later. But more importantly, Stephen Kale. It was your birthday the other day. Yes. Yesterday. Woo-hoo. Yeah. It was. It was yesterday. Happy birthday. Thank you. There you go. That, that's, that's all I've got. In the, <laughs> that's all I've got time for in this schedule. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and <moving on. laughs> Did you get any good gifts, Steve? I've got a pair of uh, shoes that may never uh, see my feet. Oh, how crazy is that? <laughs> Do the shoes have eyes? No, no. They're, they're a collector's item. Um, I'm not going to... I'm not Very gonna, nice pair of shoes. Yeah. I'm not going to flex and tell you what they are because um, I don't want to brag and I don't want anybody to get in, come brag. into my house and steal my, my <laughs> shoes. <laughs> steal, <laughs> steal my shoes. But yeah, they're a lovely pair of shoes and I'm hoping in 10 years' time they'll be uh, worth a hot dollar. Nice. Top yeah. banana. Um, so, kicking us off, seeing as we now have a jingle for it, that's right, Will Devro. You've got a tech news jingle. <gasps> but before that, it's the new TechNet video, which also has its own jingle. Maybe. Look at that, so many jingles. Steve, tell me more. What's coming out video-wise? Go. Okay, so Monday, uh, the export video came out. Uh, nothing really exciting with the export video, but it's one of those ones that needs to be up on the on the channel so people who are a bit worried to to know for certain if they've exported everything correctly just have that peace of mind. And I think that's invaluable to all the uh, to all the good skits and other con- uh, content that we put out. Um, so that's up there. So if you want to export anything correctly for our guidelines, obviously I've done it. Mm. Um, if you are submitting for a module here um, on top of just a generic exporting video, so that's there. And then, um, James, it's 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 your submission uh, it this week. Uh, yes. Your animatic video is is next on the schedule. When it is, is, that it is next on the list. Um, it, I have about edited three quarters of it, nice. so you can deal with my voice for a good how many minutes the video will be. Um, talking about how to make animatics from beginning to end. Um, so that I'm hoping to finish editing it all tomorrow. So it should hopefully be up by Friday. If not, very latest, it'll be on the submission on Monday on Monday at midday. Very nice. Very I, think, I think the exporting video is really useful because uh, it's a question we get asked a lot and especially when people are uploading to YouTube and you see them come out with like a square and like a f- you know 420p sort of video and they're always asking, oh, I, I don't get it, I filmed it at 1080p, I've got the settings right, but exporting it is one thing, but also making sure you get the project set up in the first place as the right sort of sequence as well. That's also just as important, yeah. isn't it, really? So Yeah, but yeah check it out. It's really good. Actually, fun little story about it. Oh yes. You'll um you'll see in the video that um my beard uh, gets shorter. Yeah, see if you can spot, spot, see if you can it, spot okay. it. Yeah, it's pretty mad. Isn't is this the one where your shirt continues throughout the whole video yeah. as well? <laughs> I'm wearing the same shirt in three different situations. However, those three situations are months apart. How bizarre. It was it was we had a moment of realization where I kind of look, looked at the screen, looked at Steve and was like Hang on a sec. <laughs> Basically, I, I had to do a pickup because um, I went to export the video, and when you export videos, it uses a good, good amount of your computer's kind of brain to uh to you know churn it out. Um, so it meant that when I was recording the screen and recording my voice, my voice uh, sounded uh, like uh, this, and the video was nice and smooth. So it all went out of sync and was all a bit of a mess. So I had to re-record it after I realised that the long beard was awful. So enjoy that. Put a nice little glitch effect <laughs> yeah. in there for you. Oh yeah, I like that. that so was sweet, yeah, actually. drop a comment um, with uh, nice glitch, Steve, in the comments. If you uh, if you up. see it, first one gets a chocolate bell. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> that is that's a big praise. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in right now, <laughs> <laughs> and no one could win. We got the heads up. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, but yeah, obviously with the animatic video as well, the exporting video will be very important because you'll need that. To actually export your animatic. Oh, you so the exporting video is so multi-use, it's ridiculous. Lovely. Brilliant. Uh, and the other thing, um, yes. for you new people who haven't got around to subscribing yet, if you go onto the channel as a, as an unsubscribed account, you'll see a channel trailer. Oh, yeah. Ooh. yeah, Featuring uh, all three of us. Yep. So check that out. Um, I don't know if we'll, um, if we'll release it to subscribers as just a general video, but at the moment it's sitting on that kind of placeholder of welcome to our channel, this is what we're about. Uh, and if you are subscribed, you won't actually see it. So, yeah. Because you don't need to see it because exactly. you're already in. Exactly. But <laughs> you're in the club. You're already locked in. Yeah. <laughs> there is a trailer there for 
uh, all the people that you uh, express uh, good word of mouth about our channel too. If you like, of course. Hmm. Please do. Please subscribe. Yes. Ring the bell. All that kind of jazz. <laughs> nice. <laughs> ding, ding. Well, that's what we need now. Now I need a, a ding sound effect. Get the bell on. Oh. oh. <laughs> Get the bell on. Oh, dear. Anyways, right. Tech news with Dev. New jingle. Go. I'm a big fan of that. I like that. Right. So here we go. Moving on to the tech news. Um, today, I wanted to start off with, yes, it is camera related. I'm sorry for anyone out there who isn't into your cameras, uh, but Sigma have been making lenses for Canon, Canon, Canon. <laughs> you can, <laughs> Canon. <laughs> Canon, Nikon, and a bit of Sony now recently. Um, and they've just announced, or just released, shall I say, a new 70 to 200 lens. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, what on earth is that? This is probably the lens most purchased by professional photographers for things like weddings, portraiture, sports. It covers such a wide variety of uh, jobs that you could that you could possibly need. Um, and not only that, that this lens also has image stabilization. So it means if you want to use it for video, it keeps your videos nice and smooth, and you don't get sort of like that horrible handshake. Um, and the main thing is, is it has an aperture of uh, 2.8 oh, which love it. for for those of you that out there doesn't know what that means it means you get a really nice blurry background if you're taking a picture of, of a portraiture um, it means it does much better in low light situations which is why wedding photographers love it um, obviously in like receptions and stuff like that or weddings it can get it can get quite dark and the lighting isn't always the best so having a 2.8 aperture means uh, you can take in as much light as possible uh, the reason why it's such big news is because they're undercutting Canon by about seven hundred pounds. Canon and Nikon. Ooh. Nikon, it's almost a thousand pounds cheaper. Wow. Um, and, Sorry. Yeah. And the the most recent sort of like tests and reviews on it is people are saying it's just as sharp, and in some situations, it's even coming out as sharper than what um, the other sort of camera manufacturers are offering. So um, if you're looking for a telephoto lens. Uh, and you're rocking either Canon or Nikon. That's it. That's the only two mounts they've made for it so far. Um, definitely check this out. It's currently retailing. I think it's about one thousand two hundred pounds. Um, but for a lens of this spec and what you're getting, that's going to hold its value for years to come. If not, it, you know, it may even. I think you know, residual value for that is going to be incredible. Um, as long as you look after it, obviously. Uh, so anyone out there looking for a telephoto lens, definitely check that out. It's called the Sigma seventy to two hundred Sport. Do you think people that have a Canon or a Nikon um, version of that should be worried about the value of their lens? Possibly. I mean, the the white lenses are known as, as like workhorses, and it's a bit like we're kind of talking about Nintendo games. They don't seem to devalue. No. And I think none of the L's lens uh, series seems to devalue much at all. You, you know, still the re there's some lenses in there that's 15 years old, and you still see them for like 600 pounds, 700 pounds. Um, just the quality, the build quality in them, you, you you know what you're getting. Sigma are still trying to build that that brand, and they rebranded themselves as like the art series. That's their kind of the sport series they've got as well, and that's kind of meant to be their like robust, last forever sort of lenses. But yeah, interesting thing to know. Mm. I've I've just literally looked it up uh, on um on some on some, on the old internet, and the Nikon lens they've not made it for the Z series cameras. It's still got the old F mount. Yeah, they they've mm. got that in their roadmap for the the new one, but I think Let's they're they're see. aiming for twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one. Um that's, that, that's that's not now. Yeah, but Canon now. have announced a seventy to two hundred for their new mm. R, um, RF mount, but they've only shown what it looks like. So yeah, because because I've out. just I've just had a look for the Sigma seventy to two hundred sports lens. So obviously Canon, it's still running on the old EF mount. Obviously not for the mirrorless range, yeah. Uh, which is obviously, let's be honest, the majority of Canon cameras. Uh, and Nikon, uh, they've obviously gone for the F mount, which is the current one, yes. not the uh, Z mount for the Z6 or yeah. 7. So, so just interesting, mm. really, I mean, in terms of the industry, if there's anybody listening who's in the industry, that's really, you know, it's a way you could save some money if you haven't got this lens yet, but you're looking for it. So uh, I thought I'd just put that out there to make people aware of. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about, currently running or has just passed, is the Geneva Motor Show. Um, obviously, where oh, all these big car manufacturers come in, and yeah, normally it's not going to be a topic I bring up, but um, Bugatti decided to unveil a car that 
I, I can only describe it. it looks like the Batmobile um, <laughs> and it's now a world record for the world's most expensive car sold to a consumer um, it sold for 19 million dollars has it is it actually so have they basically just bought the one they have made? made one so they basically they came up with this concept for the car um, and they went around they asked a couple people I've heard is not many um because that's all it took for one person to say yes i'll give you the money to make this um and then he bought the car uh they they showed off sort of like a model of it at the geneva motor show it's like all exposed carbon fiber massive engine six exhaust pipes looks absolutely crazy um but yeah one one man will own that car um and I'm sure he's going to keep it. And that value, I can only see really going up for a car like that. So that's I a mean, pretty special thing. It looks like a jet fighter. Yeah, pretty much. perfectly <laughs> honest. But one interesting thing to note is um, it's got the same performance value as it's... Um, I don't know what the... What the oh, the Chiron. Other, that's the one, the Chiron. It has that engine inside it. So essentially, you're paying for that with a nicer shell for six times the price. But there's one of them. So it's it's a little bit like a Pinna, Pinnafer, Pinnafer, Pinnaferina who do the kind of modifications on like the Enzos and stuff for Ferrari. And there's like, oh, because I designed this car, it's now worth like 15 million times more. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, um, yeah, that's part of it. Which I get, but, yeah. But this is from Bugatti, you know, this is like, mm. it's a, they're announcing it as a product, but for one person who's already bought it. So, <laughs> so it, was, it was just quite interesting. It's like, here's this man or woman's car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, Steve spotted this one and I was quite intrigued to kind of see where it goes. Again, again a bit more... Um, gaming related wise but uh steve do you, you want to introduce it for us i think that's quite so i was uh browsing the uh the web and i want to say it's the verge uh did it was, yeah, on this. It was. Uh, basically xbox are looking to release uh i think it's called the xbox one s s all digital edition which basically means it's the xbox one s without a blu-ray um uh, disc reader so essentially mm. it's a completely digital console um, the reason I think they might be releasing this, bear in mind this is only rumoured so far, but it's one of those ones of it's when they're going to announce it rather than if. Um, it means it's going to be a little cheaper um, because obviously you don't have to pay for a Blu-ray drive and it's to aim at people that want to potentially use the Xbox Game Pass or just exclusively get digital games. Um, at the moment, The Verge have said that it could range anywhere from $149, so $150 to $200. Um, but anywhere in that margin would be good. I mean, that opens up console gaming for a lot of people doesn't that definitely it definitely does I mean, I mean it's not like it's a bad console either it's spec no. wise so you can run all the latest stuff it's just it's How? it just seems bizarre having a game console without a cd tray but i mean yeah. every everything you know we don't have a floppy disk anymore do we so no, everything it's true that moves on and um, <laughs> although the, the only downfall of that is obviously you're kind of limited to then the microsoft store who might make their prices bigger yeah. so put do a bit of a price hike um, compared to like you know the disc version, yeah. you spend it well. Obviously, games these days cost anywhere like, up to like sixty odd quid. So if they're charging like sixty nine ninety nine a game, if you want like you know a triple A rated what game or whatever, um, then it's it might it might so they'll get the cost back somewhere um, from you somewhere or other. Well, I think, it, which it, could be the only downfall. It's interesting because um, with the release of five G coming out soon, um, a lot of from what I've seen, again the companies are going to escape my my memory. Um, but companies are starting to battle to kind of release the perfect in quote quote unquote Netflix for games with the new 5G coming out, um, which a console like this would be perfect for because yeah. if you could stream games with such a strong internet, what is the point of a digital uh, I think a physical copy? Sorry, it's not mm. just that. I think everything's turning to subscription based. I I saw um, Polaris release this new electrical car, um, and the whole idea behind it is that you have the car on a, subs- a monthly subscription basis. Wow. Um, so that in that subscription, it pays for your insurance, the electricity, um, you know, any maintenance and stuff like that. Um, it's all covered under this policy. And then when you want a new version or something, you can just hand it in with no qualms or anything. And you can just upgrade, you know, like a bit like you do with a phone contract, but it's, it's a monthly subscription. I did it, it with um, EA, with Origin Access. Yeah. It's a really good system. I mean, I can't argue with it. See, I, I'm, I'm old school. I like having things. Yeah, like, I, I still I, buy CDs. Yeah. I'm that old. Mm. I still buy a physical CD because mm. obviously it sounds better. Well, you own it then, um, don't you? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's mine. Copy. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put this in a CD player. Mm. <laughs> Shock horror. Obviously, everyone, like, you know, throwing their AirPods out of their ears. 
um, listening to streaming Spotify. Um, but for for me, I, I like owning physical things. I don't know why. It's it's a weird thing. Like I, I like having it, and I was like, I want to play this game now. I'm going to put it in this disc, and then there it is. Because um, I've still got a huge collection of like old school PC games with mm. like obviously all the old yeah. DVDs. But obviously nowadays, if you like go into like game or something and you buy a you buy a case, it's just got a download code in it. It's just like yeah. Oh. I mean, it's got this bit of plastic for no real reason. I'm just a sucker for a bargain, which sometimes can be my I downfall. Think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm um, in the same boat there. But like the reason I like the game subscription service, and I really hope that there's a real big mainstream one that will do it, is because I think even though I'm not the biggest EA gamer, um, Origin Access Premier, you could pay £100 for a year. Bear in mind, if you were, say, a sports player, uh, so I play Madden, I play not, uh, the American football version of FIFA, for those who don't know, Um <laughs> which so, we fail at massively yeah, yeah. <laughs> um if i bought that i and i got like the game of the year edition that comes with or- origin access premium paying 75 pounds oh, so that's 75 percent of your yearly amount bear in mind they churn Ooh, these games out one on one game the, yeah like they, they, are, I mean, they churn these games out on the yearly basis so if you're paying 100 yeah. pound for the year that gets you fifa that gets you battlefield that gets you the sims if you fancy it which really I do quite that, enjoy. You? yeah and, you, and you get the highest model of that game so i got the game of the year edition i got the deluxe edition of um uh the sims no you get an extra expansion pack with the sims you get this you get that you but you'd be paying three four hundred pounds for those things but that's pay true, 100 yeah. pound for a year and they're going to give you a new one next year anyway because battlefield 6 or something come out fifa 20 will come out madden 20 is going to come out oh, so many fifas so you know I, i'm i'm open to it i, I don't mind you know. I'll tell you what's quite nice though. Well, well when you got your mates around, you go a bit retro. And you go like to re- a really old FIFA. Oh yeah. No, nothing beats like booting up FIFA 2004. Oh, well, I had going. 2003 <laughs> in my head. So oh, that was close. nice. No, t- 2004 was was the one where I just created like the best team, mm. just 99s. Started like the worst league club I could find, <laughs> and then yeah, we just won the Champions League. Beat Real Madrid like 20 nil. Yeah. Um, I reckon it's got a yeah. year. There's a year until one big mm. gaming publisher is going to go right subscription service and you get all these things yeah uh, and i reckon it'll be about 15 pounds a month the netflix oh. of games the netflix, netflix of, games, of games i reckon it is coming foreshadowing has happened and that, yeah. that pretty much wraps up the uh tech sec- yeah. segment so nice over to you, Bill. brilliant so uh coming up next is film of the week I do, I do love an old projector sound. <laughs> oh, it's so nice. Um, so with Film of the Week, uh, normally we challenge each other to go and watch a film in our own time. Uh, we have a week to watch it, and then one person's seen it, the other two haven't, uh, and then we kind of review it as a collective. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, Steve, we, we have given you several challenges. And a couple now, of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago. Months ago. <laughs> months, years. Yeah, you're letting him off lightly Literally, <laughs> like almost probably last year. Uh, Overlord was. <laughs> Overlord was. Oh, God, it's been a year, Steve. Yeah. What have you been doing? Um, uh, but finally, yeah! Steve is caught up. Oh, I watched them both over the weekend. I managed to find copies of both, which was really, really nice. Um, I'll start with Overlord. Overlord was great. Uh, I mean, everyone's going to go, what, really? I'll give it a 9 out of 10. And the reason I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 is because uh, it wasn't trying to be serious. It was a, literally a sit-back, a mind... Not mind-numbing, it's just a very passive uh, film. that turn, I could just sit, Turn off your I brain. I completely turn off my brain and watch this mess of uh, of gore and uh, and yeah it was i really enjoyed it i mean it was it was funny at the same time there were a few issues that i had with it in regards to i'd go that wouldn't happen that wouldn't happen but it was overlooked because the film clearly wasn't it take wasn't taking itself so seriously and i think a lot of poor reviews for the film were people going this is a war film this wouldn't happen x y and z um but i don't think it's trying to be that i know you were saying about the trailer and how it kind of misrepresents it but I think because I was made aware that the trailer is a kind of misrepresentation of what to expect, I was not ready to be disappointed. Mm. Uh, I think that changed my perception of it. But from start to finish, I was like, "This is I'm enjoying this. This is this is good. This is entertaining." Even though it was, let's be honest, it wasn't amazing filmmaking. Nothing was groundbreaking. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't win anything. But it's one of those films you really just fancy being numb to the brain, watching and going, "Ah, that was amazing. That was really really interesting to watch. The gore was great, but over the top made me go, "Wow." Maybe go, oh my god, a few times. Um, it was good, yeah. Um, First Man was interesting. Um, I found First Man was a was a really strong film. However, my knowledge of um, Neil Armstrong, am I correct in Neil Armstrong? Yes. Um, yep. Didn't want to get that wrong. <laughs> that would have been you're embarrassing. Clear, you're clear. I don't really know, didn't know what he was like as, as, a, as a person, mm. and I felt that the, f- the first opening uh, of the film when um, 
Ryan Gosling, who plays uh, plays Armstrong, um, loses his daughter. It's not really a spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, because um, it happens in the first fifteen minutes of the film. No spoiler alert needed. No sorry. spoiler alert needed. Um, and he, it was an amazing close up shot, and he breaks down tears, and the acting's absolutely phenomenal. And that's all the emotion I really saw in him for the rest of the film, and I found it really challenging to kind of engage with him because there's a scene. Um, I mean, it's quite obvious about the man who goes to the moon, so there's going to be a scene where he has to tell his kids he goes to the moon, so again, no spoiler alert needed. And it's it could be, uh, maybe I'm looking into it wrong, but he, he there's a really, really nice scene uh, where his kids ask him what's going on, and he answers it like he's in a press conference. Like, he's so detached from his family with everything that's going on. I thought it was really interesting, but at the same time, because I don't know what Neil Armstrong was like, I can't really go, wow, that was Ryan Gosling did amazing. For me, it was just as a character, because obviously I didn't, don't know, he was just a bit emotionless and a bit enigmatic. Mm. Um, I can see why one visual effects, really interesting, very believable. Um, a bit too long, I found, in you know, a couple of things. Um, but all around, yeah, cool film, really liked it. Per- personally, I-, I thought First Man should have got more Oscar nod- or Oscar nods for noms. Personally, what I, would you have? I I, I don't for? know. I'm, I I really quite do. I mean, what did it? it what look, it wasn't for something, but I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. Special effects. I Didn't think it was special effects. It might have. Um, I, I I was tempted to put it in for sound a little bit because I I did quite like how yeah, cool. how it kind of like built uh with the kind of atmosphere it was in. Uh, maybe obviously I'm surprised it's, Roma didn't win for sound actually. Mm. After I feel. I'm surprised really The Quiet like Place didn't win. <laughs> Just so you all know, uh, we watched uh, Roma on Monday, myself and Will. But, uh, Will uh, James didn't catch I, it. I did not. Um, and yeah, yeah, interesting. We, we can save that review for another day, I think. Yeah, I think that's good. good. Stay but, tuned yeah. for a Roma review. Yeah. <laughs> Roma review. A roaming um, Roma review. Yeah, closing comments on First Man. Definitely worth the watch, and it's made me very interested to kind of read into what actually mm. happened. Obviously, I know there's conspiracy theories left, right, and centre, but that's a story <laughs> for another day. But I think, as a for somebody like me, who's you know born in the late '90s, who doesn't really know a whole bunch about it, to be brutally honest, wasn't really that interested. It's kind of gone. Yeah, this was this is a very entertaining piece of you know filmmaking, and I kind of want to know more. I want to know if this is accurate. So, yeah, it was a good recommendation. Both of them are very good recommendations. Well, what would you give them? What would you give First Man out of ten? I'm going to give it a six and a half only Ooh. because I'm not informed of what actually happened, so I can't correlate to how accurate it is. Ah, does that I make see. sense? Yes, it does. Um, yeah, I get you. But I'm, I mean, like, the way you've watched it is kind of the best way to experience a film, though, really, yeah. isn't it? Because you knew nothing about it. Um, but the f- I think it's quite interesting that the fact that you feel like the film didn't give you the correct information almost yeah i feel like i I feel like Uh, it's hiding something yeah so uh, that's quite Mm. interesting for me to see from that kind of like perspective that's Mm. quite cool yeah Mm. so um so yeah really really interesting i'll uh if i read anything into it and i'll let you know on the next podcast nice steve tells us more about first man later (laughs) um otherwise uh last week we all got set the challenge by dan head of film dan uh, to watch uh, Wong Kar Wai's um, film Chungking Express. Interesting one. It okay. was very interesting. Will, have you seen it? I did not get a chance to watch <sighs> it, I'm afraid. I was under a heavy, heavy workload. Um, I apologise, Dan. I will watch it for the next week's one. <laughs> I promise. Look, you don't need to take this out on me at a later date. I to will, be, uh, to be fair, James, we got very lucky. Of yeah, hang on a sec. Wait, it. yeah, let's rewind a second. <laughs> so, how long ago did you watch it? <laughs> under an hour <laughs> yeah literally it's like just this afternoon yeah, so whilst I'm there at my computer <laughs> yeah well we might have, we might have snuck into the back of Rob's lesson where he had a screen ah, right it. maybe I've done that I did to be fair I did bring my Chromebook and did do a little bit of marking That's fine. Right. Likewise. Likewise. I'm Likewise. which is probably the thoughts. which is probably why the beginning was even more confusing because <laughs> I was trying to work and watch at the same time which is never a good plan uh Steve what what did you think about chunking Express so I thought it was two films um set in the same city around the same kind of idea but then they've gone off into different rooms and made the film and they've got these would be great next to each other it was really odd they were two what felt like completely separate narratives um however because i was a bit confused in the first one when the second one started and i was kind of aware okay this is two different storylines the second half is really really interesting mm. i think if i then went and rewatched the first half i'd have that same opinion because it's so abstract in how it kind of conveys love quote unquote um it's very pretty for 1994 very very pretty for 1994 
Um, there is a very strange switch in internal dialogue, which I find really interesting. So we bounce between the four characters, if you're counting both uh, halves. Um, and it keeps me really interested because you'll hear one side of the story about what they're thinking and then you'll go to the other internal dialogue and they'll say something else. And I find that a real interesting kind of touch. So we as an audience kind mm. of knew their own kind of internal battles with how they were seeing it. I mean, uh, Rob was telling us a bit more about Carl Wise in uh, how he conveys loneliness. And I thought that was really interesting because there's a few scenes in it um, where the frame rate's really off. Yeah, um, it's, that's kind of like one car wise, like kind of yeah. signature, almost like signature move kind oh, of and thing. It, it's so powerful. Um, I, I've made my notes here. The frame rate it seems a connotation of you being lost in your own little world, Ooh. which I thought was really interesting. So detached from the world that was just zipping by in a blur because you're so caught up in what you're doing. I thought it was really, really yeah. interesting. Um, and I do like the fact that everyone, can, every character tackled their little quirk of love in quite a humorous way one of the mm. police officers just talked to an, an inan- inatimate, inanimate objects inanimate inanimate objects um and it was really humorous um i'm quite interested so did it work having these two separate narratives sort of alongside each other or, pers- was it, or, personally did, it, or did it split no. your brain a little bit I mean, at, the, for, at one point, I was still, I still thought I was in the first bit, and yeah. then I went, "Oh wait, this is a totally different police officer." Wait, mm. what? Huh? And I was waiting for yeah. the first one to come back in yeah. some way. Yeah, I, I thought they'd introduced me. a new character, and mm. then the two cops were going to like um, maybe like find each other, or yeah. um, so you're like, waiting for that moment. When yeah, they and then over, it just but... never came. But then, like Steve was saying, the second half felt much more. God, not, not kind of real well yeah almost real a yeah, bit more really sweet uh, really, a bit really more sweet. sort of immersive i mean well like you were saying about the kind of editing style I, I, for me the kind of notes i made it made me feel disjointed from it but also then immersed in it yeah so i felt really disjointed from everything else going on but really immersed as kind of like almost like a point of view of you were now that character yeah. and you were seeing all these um so seeing the kind of slow-mo but sped up kind of sounds um, like an out of body experience kind yeah of a thing. little bit <laughs> It was it was v- very strange. Um, for, for some reason, that well, for the first guy loves pineapples, but only out of date pineapples. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, but both characters are very bad police officers. Very bad. Um, like obviously, <laughs> the, the, there's there's a kind of like this second like bad at their job or just bad as no jo- no no, <laughs> no 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 like bad at their job. Like someone's broken into your house. Yeah. And you don't see them or notice. That yeah. Or notice different. that they've like cleaned up or like moved all your right, stuff right. around. Uh, okay. It's really weird. Need to um, work on their detective of skills definitely I mean, um, they were out and about he was just eating at different shops yeah he loved food he the, fir- the first any- guy <laughs> loved food yeah. um but ma- maybe that was kind of like a, a connotation of sort of like trying to eat the pain away of loneliness or something maybe yeah uh, I mean, potentially yeah. it really made you kind of think about each individual which i quite liked it really challenged that i mean one thing mm. i did look into apparently when this film was released kind of in asian film bullets were flying everywhere so apparently this was a nice fresh of fresh night breath of fresh air um in regards to a nice little love story um albeit in two parts but why not it's a bit different Got to get us talking um what would, would you give it out of 10 steve that's uh, the question i would have if we're doing it in like i'm gonna no, give it 94. overall a seven yeah but i would have given the second half alone like an 8.5 because for some bizarre reason with the filmmaking obviously there'd be a lot more to look into and talk about in regards to critical approaches but i was really engrossed with the two mm. characters i really wanted to see how their relationship develops um but obviously because i was a bit thrown with how the narrative unfolds in albeit two parts it kind of took me too long to really um get get with it let's be honest um and by that time i was like oh it's over oh they oh credits oh. right um but would you would you watch it again to understand more or yeah. you kind of have you had enough no i'd watch it again bit? yeah oh, i'd give it another watch yeah. i'd 100 percent watch the second half again yeah so i want to watch the first half again oh, now. now i know i want to watch the first half again ah. i think i'm I'm good with the second half i'm, I'm aware of their yeah their um their dysfunction mm. b- between them which i'm again arguable open to interpretation but yeah really interesting really really interesting mm. Uh, I think I think for me I'm, I'm kind of similar to you I'd give the second half about an 8 and I'd give the first half probably about a 6 yeah. and then overall nice even 7 yeah, I but I, I think if I would have seen that in 94 oh, I it, think my score would have been higher oh absolutely personally yeah. it looked really really nice and some of the some of the shots in there were mm, nice very nice so Will what film have we been set to watch well this uh, week Jane has given us a fantastic recommendation um, Old Boy uh, the original not the remake 
Um, very important. <laughs> Original, not the remake. Yeah. Um, it is very, very highly praised uh, across critics, reviewers, internet, magazines, the lot. Um, I have not personally seen it. Um, I definitely have not seen it. I have been seen told this. rigorously to watch it, and um, I'm not, it's nice it's actually come about now, so uh, I'm definitely going to be catching that at some point during the week. It's described as a South Korean neo-noir action thriller. Mm. Mm. Um, I've, we've, me and Steve kind of looked a little bit about the premise of it, about a guy who's essentially been trapped in a room um he doesn't really know why essentially i think that's, oh. that's sort of like the that's sort of the best way to put it for now i don't really want to say too much i think the trailer the gave, trailer does say 15 years yeah so i think it's something worth not reading into too much and just going in and enjoying it i agree um i'm looking forward to this one and you know it's been quite highly critically acclaimed um so yeah i'm looking forward to it i'm i should when I was a student, I remember this film being talked about quite a lot. I want to say it was Ross that talked about it because apparently there's a scene where I want to say a squid is eaten whole. Oh, um, that's that's one interesting. Of the characters. Um, whether that's correct or not, I don't know, um, and I don't can't even confirm that it was Ross. But a teacher told me about this film when I was here as a student many years ago, and said that that happened. We'll find out film. soon, won't we? We will find out, <laughs> and if I am incorrect. My God, I have no idea we'll, why. We will and return. How I of that. We will return to hashtag squid. Yeah. In next Hasht- week's episode, hashtag squid. Yeah. Is that nice. what's going on Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> hashtag squid. Hashtag omg. Um, yeah, and that's, so yeah. That wraps up. So that is old boy. Two thousand three is our task for the week. Nice. Right. Yep. Game yep. on. Can I keep up to date? This is my question. <laughs> I cut it fine this week. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, lastly, it is uh, time for Tune of the Week. I still don't have a jingle. I need to make myself one. Oh, you got to left yourself to last. I'll just, I'll just have a sad yeah. trombone yeah. instead. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the nearest I can get. Um, so uh, this week, uh, Track of the Week, which I believe has already made Steve's Spotify playlist, which I'm very happy about. Yeah currently winning 10 mm. out of 10 uh is a band called broods and the song is called peach uh highly recommended uh broods are a new zealand duo uh i've been following uh, quite a few of their albums from the past their latest album which this track is on dropped on the 1st of february this year and it's called don't feed the pop monster interesting fantastic name uh there's quite a few good tracks on there i do highly recommend listening to the whole thing uh there's one i think it's called dust which is quite good uh, and one called hospitalized which is also quite a good listen as well but my track of the week is broods and the song is called peach and if you really want uh i've made us a where's my kit bag playlist See, oh, oh, a genius it's, idea. It's a terrible joke, um, which you can find out on Spotify. I'll put the link in. Oh, I'll try and force the link up on Twitter somewhere. Uh, but you can listen to all of the previous tracks of the week on there, uh, and I might chuck off an extra couple of goodies in there as well for you to listen to. I like that. Aren't That's I so nice? nice. Oh, nice touch for so good. I know. Um, so I'll keep that updated every week. Occasionally, I'll put some extra tracks on there uh, just for a bit of fun. Otherwise, uh, this has been the Where's My Kit Bag podcast. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Obviously, if you're not already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you literally just type in TechNet and College, you will find us with the first hit. Just look for the little TechNet eye. Uh, you can also listen to us on iTunes, Spotify, and also SoundCloud as well. Otherwise, I've been James. I've been Will. And I'm Steve. And this has been Where's My Kit Bag? Thanks for listening to the Where's My Kit Bag podcast. Please feel free to drop us a comment about anything you want us to cover in the section below or hit us up on our Instagram and Twitter. You can find us on F6 Media Film. Also, if you want to go old school, send us an email, technet at farmer.ac.uk.